Before I can work out the shape of a molecule, I first need to understand something called a region of electron density. A region of electron density is just the space around an atom where you can expect to find electrons. So there's two types of regions of electron density. You've got your bonding regions of electron density. So this covers things like your single bonds, your double bonds and your triple bonds. And you've got your non-bonding regions of electron density. So think of your lone pairs of electrons that you sometimes find around atoms. Now as for later on, we're going to end up counting the regions of electron density and what matters is that whether you've got a single bond, a double bond, a triple bond or a lone pair, each of those only count as one region of electron density. So let's get into it and let's look at an example with say carbon dioxide. And let's say we had to find the shape of the molecule for CO2. To do that, the first thing I'm going to do is pop down a Lewis diagram for CO2 and when I'm counting my regions of electron density, I'm only going to focus on the central atom. So I'm going to look at carbon and I can see that coming out from carbon is a double bond to an oxygen. Double bond, that's one region. And I can see that on the other side of the carbon dioxide Lewis diagram is another double bond to an oxygen. Double bond, one region. This means in carbon dioxide, there are two regions of electron density around the central carbon atom where they're both occupied by bonding pairs of electrons. Now why is this important? Because you know that electrons are negatively charged. And this means that around the central carbon atom, there are two regions of electron density, two regions of negative charge. So negative and negative charges are going to repel each other, which means that it should make sense to make sure that each of these um, double bonds are placed as far away from each other to give maximum separation in order to minimize that repulsion. And when I do that, I can see that the carbon dioxide molecule ends up having a shape that is like linear with a bond angle of 180 degrees. If I was to look at another example with say H2CO, same as before, I need a Lewis diagram down. I can see that there is a single bond to an H coming from the central atom. Single bond, one region. I can see that there's another single bond going to an H. Single bond, one region. And I can see that from the carbon atom, there's also a double bond to an oxygen there. Double bond also counts as one region. This means around this central carbon atom, there are three regions of electron density. And just like before, they need to be arranged around the central carbon atom to give maximum separation in order to minimize uh, that repulsion. And when that happens and I try to move these bonds around the central carbon atom, this means that I expect to get a shape which looks a bit more like this. And if I could come along and measure the angles, I could say that they're about 120 degrees and that if I was to describe this shape, I could describe it as being triangular planar. Triangular because, you know, it's like the shape of a triangle and planar because it's a flat molecule. Another example, let's say we had to find the shape of a molecule like ozone, O3. Same as before, we need a Lewis diagram um, to go down. And I'm looking at the central atom, which is the oxygen that's pictured in the middle. And I can see a single bond to an oxygen. Single bond, one region. I can see a double bond to another oxygen. Double bond, also one region. And I can also see a lone pair of electrons on the central oxygen atom. So that counts as one region as well. So in total, I can say that there are three regions of electron density around the central oxygen atom. Two of those are occupied by bonding regions. One's a single bond to an O, one's a double bond. And one of those regions is occupied by a non-bonding non -bonding pair of electrons. If I was to then go ahead and try to work out the shape, it's the same as before, except that when I try to rearrange these bonds, I have to remember that the lone pair of electrons also counts as a negative region as well. So it's going to do the same repelling effect. So I need to arrange the lone pair, the double bond and the single bond around the central oxygen atom in a way which gives maximum separation and minimum repulsion as well. And when I do that and I try to measure the angles, I should expect to get about 120 degrees based on its parent shape. So if it was its original trigonal planar shape, it would have 120 degrees, but with lone pairs of electrons, they contribute to the shape, but we don't consider them part of it. And because of that, I can say that O3 has a shape of bent or V-shaped. 
and that it has a bond angle of approximately 120 degrees. Bonding regions of electron density and bonding regions of electron density are things like your single bonds, your double bonds. Hello, toast. Toast. What are you doing?